Hey guys, today I thought I'd do a video on how you know when your system is being overutilized. So you might have a system that's maybe a certain time of day it's running slowly or a certain time of week, you're getting complaints of um, slow performance, but you really don't know what's going on and when, when you go and check, everything's fine. I know that happens to all of us and you need to know when the problem is occurring. So this is a great tool I'm going to show you today on how you can monitor and know when your system is being overutilized. So you have to know like if you're running out of maybe your disk I.O. You're waiting on disk I.O. Maybe your system starts paging a disk, which has caused horrible slowness. So let's say you're running out of memory or you have, you know your processors are just running too high. Or maybe your network um, your system is waiting on uh, networking I.O. So you're you're running too much networking bandwidth at any given time. So you really, but you don't know until you actually go and check, and maybe there's no hints in the log too. So you go check the syslog, and no information. So really having something that monitors that for you and notifies you when there's a problem is really valuable. So today I'm going to show you how I can use this Pearl plugin to actually monitor low-level information and collect statistics on how my system is being um, utilized. So you need to know this. You need to know, especially if you're having performance problems. So go ahead and check out this video and it's using Nagios with a Pearl plugin and it'll monitor your system utilization and notify you when there's a problem. So you go right away and check to see what's causing the issue. You know, if it's just a spike during a certain time of day, maybe you could add some more system to uh, do some load balancing. Maybe you could buy some more memory for your system or get faster disk, solid state, or just, um, a better networking or storage solution. So just keep watching and I'll show you how easy it is to get started using this plugin. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and go to our Nagios server website. So this has all the information about what version we're running, what host we're connecting to, our groups, the services. So this is just where all the information about how our server is configured would be located. So we would have our host list. That's probably the most interesting thing I usually look for to see how our hosts are doing. And you can see the services currently being monitored, which host. And then you can drill in deeper and go into status and look at the specific services. Now, a lot of Linux systems have additional services and functionalities that might be non-standard. Maybe if you work in a research lab and you to do a lot of computational stuff, or any sort of big data that requires a heavy computational, you need more specific information, more specific details than what are the default um, statistics being collected. Maybe you're not interested in the ping or exactly the root partition or maybe the total processes. Maybe you're actually more interested in like if it's swapping. You're more interested in disk I.O. and network I.O. When you need to drill down deep into how your Linux system is doing is when you're in need an additional uh, plugin. And that's what I'm going to go over today, how to find the plugin that will actually help you get more statistical data of how your system is performing. And this is really good for troubleshooting. Or again, if you're running, you know there's peak times where you feel like your system is being... Um, overutilized, then again, this would be a good tool to collect information on that. And again, you have this nice interface. So if we go to nagiosexchange.com and you search for check, check Linux stats, it would come to this plugin and it's, uh, it's using Perl, some Perl modules, and I'll go over how to install the Perl modules, but it's collecting that performance, the system performance information. And again, this is really important if you have system in production, in a certain time of day, you might feel like it's running slowly. So we could run some of the functionality in this plugin and start monitoring um, the system performance really at a much lower level. So again, it has options for checking sockets or ports, um, ping if it's swapping, disk I.O., network I.O., uh, disk load. Let's see what else does it check. It checks quite a bit here. So I was going to go over how to do check the swapping because I have had systems in the past who run out of memory, start swapping the disk, and all of a sudden everything's running really slow and it takes a second to be like, what's going on? Maybe you don't catch it right away until later on users are complaining. So it'd be nice to be able to catch it right away and see how it's going, the system's going. So again, it has tons of functionality here, checking this uh, network throughput. 
checking here how many files you have open. Again, a large number of functionality. And it's because the Perl plugin that it's using actually has a lot of functionality built into it. It's very well written. And if you look at the notes, I'll put in the author's name here, who gets credit for writing that plugin. So this, this Nagios plugin is using a Perl script module that's actually really well written for pulling system performance information. And to install the plugins, we'll be doing some installations in a minute to get this plugin to work. By default, you will not have this system Perl module installed. So once you're done taking a look at all the great tools this Nagios plugin has to offer, we should go over and to open up a console window to our system. So we download it, we download it, and then we get to take a look at it. If you really want to look at it, these are text files, so you can actually look at the content of it if you're interested in how these are written. So I'm on my client machine, not on the Nagio server anymore. Um, I opened up a console, and this is the system that I want to monitor the performance on. So I'm going to download my Nagios uh, plugin. I mean, it's by default goes to the downloads folder if you use the GUI. And I have two files here. One's a .pl profile, and the second one is a Nagios remote executor configuration file. So we surely have one if you already configured Nagios to run uh, this Linux system to run. Um, in your Nagio server to be monitored, you're already going to have this configuration file, so you don't necessarily need a new one. We can see how it's configured. I'm going to do a change mod 755 so the script is not executable. executable. So I'm, I just set the execute bit, so now I can run it. Most systems, you might see an error message like this. It's missing a utils pro module, and this pro module specifically is used. Um, by Nagios enough that it's actually included in the Nagios install. So for my Nagios install, I found it in user lib64 Nagios. Um, Nagios plugin. If you take a look at there's the file utils pm. So if we go back to our script, the one that we just tried to run and it failed, we could actually just put in that path and it'll point to the plugin it's looking for. So I'm just going to do a quick vi. On the file and it's going to pull up it's going to pull out the script the Perl script that I want to modify and I'm just going to add that path and define any library path so if you actually just scroll down a little bit and you'll see right there it says use and put in my path initially when I typed it I forgot to put in lib so I'm going to go back and add the lib variable so it says use lib and then I'm adding a path Then if I do a colon, WQ, exclamation, it will actually save it. And now if I try to run it again, I do get another error message, but now this time it's a different error message. It's looking for that Perl module that's able to pull system statistics. So that's the one I was talking about earlier. So it's able to actually uh, pull really in-depth right system information. So we used to do a yum search for statistics. And it actually comes right up. So this is really easy if you're running Red Hat or CentOS, you're going to be able to run these same commands, or Fedora, you should be able to run these same commands and able to install it using a simple yum call. You could also do it through Perl um, shell to the, what's it called, mspan, <laughs> mcspan, <laughs> haven't done it in a little bit, but you actually could compile it in Perl. That's a little bit, uh, a bit harder because sometimes the compilation within Perl actually does fail. Downloading these pre-compiled binaries or um, scripts here actually works a lot easier. So now if we run it again after installing our Perl module, you see it runs um, some help information. That means it successfully was able to successfully run that Perl file and it has all the module it needed. So now we go ahead and start defining um, how our client is going to monitor and what services it's going to monitor and then how it's going to report back to the Nagios server. So you can take a look at some of the uh, example configurations here. 
for the different services. So you kind of could pick and choose whatever service you feel like you need to monitor in your environment. And then if you just run it on the command line, I always do this to test it. So I do Perl, the script, and then the arguments. Um, I just use one of the sample ones here, minus N, minus W warning, minus C critical, and minus P is the um, pattern. So it's searching for a pattern, the Ethernet name pattern, ETH0. And the minus N is for networking. So it's, this command is to monitor the networking device with a pattern of ETH0, Ethernet0, with a warning of and a critical of, and it gives you um, the output back. So it tells you your network is okay because it doesn't reach the warning or critical thresholds in the command. So once I know it's working on the command line, then I feel I'm a little more comfortable configuring on the server because once you configure in the first server, it gets a little bit harder to troubleshoot. So again, I always recommend testing any um, plugin on the command line first before going on and configuring that same plugin to be remotely executed by a server and send the data back because there's just more parts that can break when you do something like that. So this is just a, an easier way of troubleshooting. So now that we know it works well on the command line, we can continue on and actually going and configuring the Nagios client files. Now the first thing I would to do to configure the client is going to the Nagios configuration file um, on the client that you want to monitor. And we're going to go in and find our nrepe.com file. And this is going to allow us to find a new command that we'll be able to run on our Linux client by a remote server. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go ahead and modify, do a VI. And you can look at the examples. There's lots of examples here. So we're going to follow the syntax command. I'm just going to copy and paste it. I'm going to call it paging or check paging. I'm going to correct that in a second. And it's going to point it to the path of that plugin we just downloaded and copied over to our Nagios plugin file. So we should have downloaded it. It downloads the downloads folder, but you should really copy it over to the plugins folder under Nagios. Um, that's where all the other plugins are located. So it's just help for it helps easier troubleshooting later and finding what's going on. We're going to put in the file name, check Linux stats.pl, and then we're going to give it the argument. And if you remember when we ran it before, the help information, ton of sump sample arguments, that's a good starting point to figure out what um, performance you're trying to test for. And maybe you can kind of um, practice and test different warnings and critical thresholds for that specific service you're monitoring or specific performance you're monitoring. So I'm just correcting the name, check paging, the path to our Perl file, and then an argument. The concept of paging and swapping is actually uh, commonly interchangeable, but there is a slight distinction between them. So this actually tests for both paging and swapping. So it's Paging is when a portion of a running process is put into memory. That's really the more common one. Swapping is when an entire process is uh, stored. And stored in memory, when I say memory, I'm sorry, the memory on disk, so virtual memory, where it's no longer in physical memory or RAM. It's more, it's being written to disk. So you really want to avoid paging. Uh, because it really does greatly slow down your system. So by monitoring if a system starts paging or swapping, um, you're trying to make sure that the performance, so you'll probably see this more in anything running, uh, any sort of numerical research or highly computation, computational work, you're more likely to see this. Generally on servers, you probably won't see paging and swapping. Uh, unless something really is going on, maybe some kind of denial of service or some reason your system's running particularly high um, memory load. If you're interested in checking the code that is running and checking the system performance and getting collecting the system statistics, you can actually look at the 
plugin. It's, it's a text file, so it's a Perl script. So you can actually look right in there and find the function that's running for specifically for swapping. So if you're a little familiar with Perl script and you want to modify something in the script, you can actually go in there and add your own code. It's a script to modify it. So it has additional functionality that you programmed into the plugin. So here is the script that is, and it's, it's using that Perl module there to collect swapping information. From there, it kind of just sorts it, it sleeps, it sorts it, collects information, determines if it's critical or a warning, and then it returns data back to you. Okay, so now we're done on the client side. Let's go over to Dayo server. This is the one actually um, that's hosting the Nagios website with the uh, user interface to show you host information. So this is the system that we're going to go ahead and configure to go out to our client. So we're going to add the, our command. So we're going to our commands file. It's located in user local Nagios etc objects command. And we're going to find a new command for paging. So we're going to call it check paging. And it's using the check NRPE, so that is the remote plugin executor, Nagios remote plugin executor, that's going to remotely run the um, command we defined on the client. So I happen to be calling it the same thing, the command on the server and the command on the client, and you don't necessarily have to do that, but you'll see what I mean in a second. So now if we go over here to our Linux client configuration, here we're going to go ahead and define a new service and the service is going to call the command we just defined. So you just choose somewhere in the file. Um, you can put it at the bottom or if you like it next to a related service, you can put it other next to other services that check um, maybe some other information like this guy if you have a service for that. So I like to just copy another one, another defined service, and I'm just going to go in and modify um, the description, just a few of the fields. You don't have to even change the whole thing. Just the service description and the check command. The check command, um, so this is how we declare it locally on the server command file. Now we're going to pass it an argument. And remember, locally on the server, we're actually just um, calling the local NRPE, I'm sorry, the remote NRPE on the Linux client we want to monitor. From there, we have to let the know the Nagios remote plugin executor know what command to remotely execute on that server, and then re return it back to the Nagios server. So, so the first check paging is what's defined locally on the server. the The exclamation defines an argument. So when we created the command, we gave it a possible passing an argument, one argument, and that is the name of the remote command on the Linux client being monitored. So I know it's a little confusing, but once you do it a few times, it's really, really easy. We're going to restart Nagios, and now we're going to go back to our Nagios web interface, and we're going to look, wait, and look for our new service. You should just reload the page, and it'll just take a few minutes. It'll say pending right away once you reload the page. And if you have a few minutes, it'll come back with the information and the status of your new system performance information. So again, I chose popping, but again, there's Disk.io, there's some great services, network throughput. So if you have a system running, um, you feel like it's running out of network bandwidth, or um, the Disk.io is particularly high when it's writing, maybe you have a database and it's writing a lot. So these are, it's a great tool so you can customize this plugin for all those tests. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, subscribe to get update and always, always know what's going on with your server. All right, you don't want to be the last one to know when there's a problem that can be more embarrassing. So definitely always get monitor and always get paged just so you know what's going on. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.